a very good evening to all the viewers here we are back again with round 2 of battle of perspectives and here we are with ashmita and shoham ready to battle it out before inviting them of course i'll uh, just go through the topic that they are going to debate on that is privatization is the only way towards development and to debate on this topic and to go for the motion i'll invite asmita and to go against the motion i will invite soham bhattacharya they are here in fb i request asmita and soham to turn on their cameras and microphones and uh, yeah after that is done i'll again in uh, say a very good evening to our viewers and i'll uh, wait for just one minute so that uh, we get the viewers and then we'll start in the meantime i will explain uh, to our viewers the procedure of this debate we have divided this debate into two parts the first 15 minutes both our participants will uh, keep their arguments 7 8 minutes each and then we'll have the debate session for 15 minutes where they can go up against each other and counter the arguments and also questions will be taken from the audience and from the viewers uh, to ensure that uh, actually they can also you know, put forward their arguments and their points uh, and questions also to the participants will take only two each so that's it it's already uh, past eight o'clock uh, on the clock and i'll just uh, actually introduce them again to our viewers those who are joining for the first time Ashmita is actually a bachelor's student who is uh, studying computer science in Sanzibia's College Park Street Kolkata and Soham Bhattacharya has just completed his BTEC or sorry in, uh, BSc in biotechnology from Amity University Kolkata and hence uh, I start this debate so we'll uh, take our first arguments from Ashmita who is going to go for the topic Am I audible? Yeah, you're yeah, audible. So, starting off in my signature style, I would like to paint a few pictures from my life with words for you to envision. I've often seen people completely petrified by the fact that they have to visit a government bank to get some work done. Now, being an official adult, I needed a bank account. So the only way to find out what this fear was all about was going to the bank myself. Now, it's in my family tradition that we have multiple accounts in different public and private sector banks. So I am taking names. I go to ICICI and I get my work done in 24 hours. I go to SBI and they ask me to come three days back to back. Reasons, first day, the concerned person was absent. Second day, the form which I had to fill to open my bank account was over. So you see, that is when I realized why people are so petrified. It is funny, right? Well, the next story that I am going to tell you will not make you laugh, but it will literally enrage you. My friend's grandfather retired about a year ago from the post of a government headmaster. He required his pension procedures to complete so that he could live a breathable life. One year since then, and he still visits the pension office begging to pass what is rightfully his. Sometimes the employees are busy gossiping, while in other times they say that he needs to give money if he wants his file to be processed faster. Well, I am sure these are very striking examples in all our lives. Incidents which all of us face when we expect some government organization to help us with something. And clearly, I find no scope of development in such scenarios. With this opening statement, I, Ashmata Mondal, stand for the motion that privatization is the only way towards development. Before beginning, let us understand what exactly is privatization. It is the transfer of ownership, property, or business from the government to the private sector. Now, privatization does not mean that the government sells the entire asset to a private company. This is a very wrong concept. Privatization occurs when more than 51% of the shareholding of the government is transferred to the private sector. 
now this itself provides some amount of flexibility the fact that the entire company is not run under the private sector shows that the government still has certain influence on them in recent times you must have heard about the indian government selling public sector companies banks airlines railways and much more into the hands of privatization my first point is let us talk about the very first issue in nationalization which is corruption why do you think we are debating today whether privatization is better or not it is because of the several disadvantages that nationalization has the first being corruption according to statistics every year over 50% of the indian population pays bribes to government officials 66.3% of the people in the world bribe in order to get jobs in government places one out of every two people pay bribes to get their own work done i have witnessed the most undeserving of people acquiring the highest posts in government sectors i have witnessed people waiting in line for days months and years just to get a simple work done the corruption in government sectors is rampant and beyond our imagination but of course the level of corruption in privatization is way minimal my second point is let's talk about services like i said me trying to open a bank account in sbi took 3 days in contrast to icici in one day it would be very safe to conclude that nationalized sectors have inefficient employees keeping this in mind i would like to state a simple fact the government employees might be talented but they lack motivation why because whether or not they work they will always have a guaranteed source of income thus there is no scope of improvement there is no competition there is no motivation no innovation and no will to work in case of privatization any individual can open any account in any sector of the society this indicates that the level of competition increases every day and this is the very driving force of their hard work the healthy competition motivates them to do better every day private sectors will offer you astounding and unparalleled services because they will obviously want you to prefer them over the others thus work is done in the least amount of time without compromising on quality research has shown that privatization has improved productivity as measured by tfp or total factor productivity people get paid for their work unlike the government sectors where everybody gets paid irrespective of whether they work or not the country in general in case of privatization saves huge amounts of money and taxes get reduced continuing with this point i would like to state that privatization increases entrepreneurship i mean who does not like the idea to have a brand of his own an identity of his own and a recognition of his own the more the number of startups the more the more the build of unicorn startups now what is unicorn startup unicorn startups are basically startups that are valued at more than 1 billion consider america it has got 240 such unicorn startups china has got 174 of them whereas india has got only 57 why did i mention china and america well we all know how developed these countries are in terms of infrastructure opportunities and business since these countries have many such private startups the competition it is to a very huge level and such competition has led to an immense decrease of service prices more improvement more demand and more sales my third point is since the very beginning everything was controlled by the government ladies and gentlemen why do you think privatization developed to such an extent today that we are trying to compare it with nationalization it is because people afflicted it people trusted it and why did people trust it it is because their services were much better efficiency was much better in the victorian era when there was a lot of brutality and wars 
a very important question arised at what cost let me utilize this question today government services are cheaper and sometimes even free but at what cost at the cost of people waiting for days tirelessly begging for their rights and even bribing from under the table private services might be costlier but at what cost at the cost of better services less time consumption and much faster results another thing that i would like to say is that when these two systems are defined nowadays the very perspective that comes up is nationalization is created keeping in mind service for people and betterment of society whereas privatization is built on the foundations of earning profit to this i will request the audience to travel centuries back and think about early men one of these men simply wanted to pass his time and he began to brush two stones against each other voila fire so you see the motive of the man was to simply pass his time whereas his actions led to the discovery of the most revolutionary element on earth similarly although the motive of privatization is to earn profit what harm is it doing when ultimately at the end of the day i am getting my work done and although government organizations are built with the motive of serving people think about it are they really delivering such performance what is the point of government services making promises when they cannot even keep them again this profit making serves as a motivation to private sectors these organizations need to cut costs and earn profit for which they will definitely try to attract audience by performing better another very important point is political interference we are all aware of how much of an influence politics can have on any government sector even the most undeserving of people get the highest paid jobs employees are motivated by political pressure rather than actual welfare of the people in case of privatization the political interference decreases to almost a zero let's face facts government sectors in india are more focused on political growth than economic with privatization the role of government in economy gets reduced and enables companies to pay a portion of their existing debates thus reducing interest investment now you might be thinking ashmita mondal is just sitting here and saying things without any proof well i have got a huge list to demonstrate the positive impacts of privatization in the path of development number 1 japan divided its territory into six different regions and each different region was given given off to a private sector to maintain the railways this led to the normalization of labor management relations elimination of irrational interdependence and promoted incentives for competition and marketization it has been reported that the performance and efficiency of japanese railways which include scheduling punctuality short turnarounds and fares have drastically been positive so much so that the ministers today say that they can never go back to nationalization number 2 in china SOEs have gradually been privatized since the early 1990s. Research has shown that privatization has improved productivity, uh, where the TFP of China increased from 60% to 77%. Privatization has also doubled their probability of exporting. Number three, in the year 1991, the debt of India reached to 70 billion. at that time shri narasimha rao was appointed the prime minister who in turn announced dr manmohan singh as the finance minister to prevent bankruptcy 21 tons of gold flew to the bank of england in order to mortgage with this he obviously had to revive india's economy what did he do he introduced privatization you see the selling of assets generates a great deal of income when a public enterprise is sold to a private one naturally a lot of money is earned and this money can then be used by the government for the betterment of the society the same logic was applied and in 1992 privatization was introduced in india 
Indian government received an income of 3038 crore rupees which was then used for the benefit of India's economy. With multinational companies entering the market and banks being privatized, India achieved a growth rate of 6.78%, which was initially a mere 3%. The gross domestic product or GDP increased from 5.5% to 6.9%. The rate of growth in agricultural sectors increased from 3% to 4.8% thanks to privatization. I hope these three examples enlighten you about how huge privatization has played a positive role. Now, it would be very unfair for me to say that privatization has zero disadvantages. It definitely does. And where there are disadvantages, there is always scope for in improvement. When I stand for the motion that privatization is the only way, let me make it clear. I am not saying that every sector should be privatized. Only those sectors that can be, should be privatized. Privatization is the only way towards development in case of those sectors that can be privatized. Consider this metaphor. India has many clothes to wear, but in order to reach the top, it requires some ornamentation, some jewelry. Similarly, India already has enough nationalized sectors but to reach the top it requires private sectors let the existing nationalized sectors in the fields of health weapons and petroleum exist but for future development privatization is the only way because at this point there are not enough private sectors to prove how beneficial they can be in the near future according to famous researchers cook and uchida their studies suggest that the lack of appropriate governmental reforms is what creates disadvantages. So it is very clear, dear audience, that the system of privatization is not wrong. However, the regulations done by the government pertaining to the system are wrong. If the government sets and dictates private sectors to maintain some rules, then privatization in the near future would definitely prove to be the most beneficial. Take the example of Japan itself. While it privatizes railway sectors, the government made strict rules that their prices cannot increase more than a stipend. And that is how they have the most successful railways in the world in spite of having privatization. Uh, most of the countries have already introduced monopoly regulations where private companies are given a set of margins beyond which they cannot charge for services. With this, dear audience, I would like to rest my case, emphasizing again that for development, privatization is the only way towards a brighter future. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ashmita. That was a, a long and enriching kind of uh, arguments that you have presented. So I now uh, invite Soham to actually present his side of arguments against the motion. Yes, it's uh, very compelling arguments indeed. But uh, to uh, speak for the motion and say that uh, uh, privatization is the only way towards development and to uh, counter that by saying not only, but you have to exclude sectors and also to say that uh, at the end of the day, finally conclude privatization is the only way is to contradict one, one statement. Anyway, I'll begin with my regular introductions. Um, uh, hello, okay, uh, let me start with the quote. Let me start with my familiar field as well. Uh, prime, uh, privatization is presented as being only, uh, as the only alternate to an inefficient, corrupt uh, state. In fact, it is not a choice at all. It is a mutual profitable business contract between a private contractor or a company and between ruling elites of the third world. The above stated course shows us the true nature of privatization. The merely definition of privatization is a transfer of business industries and services from a public to a private ownership and its control. But to transfer assets, money and power most importantly, uh, by privatization to, an, to a group of elites is a modern way 
and a civilized way of autocracy and dictatorship. Good evening to all and uh, all of you. Uh, excuse me, present here today. I Swam Bhattacharya will be speaking against the notion of whether privatization is the only way towards development. Ever since the pandemic struck, more than 200 million people have been reported to have fallen behind in the severe poverty line, while the top 10% that control 80% of the resources of the modern world have been able to increase their monetary benefits by 25%. If, doesn't, if this does not show you that with privatization as, the in, uh, as an instrument, that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, I don't know what is. I have heard a lot of, uh, I honestly feel like uh, the eighth wife of Henry uh, the sixth, uh, because when uh, the turn of the last wife comes, I don't know to do anything more different than that, than to just counter the arguments of my uh, fellow debatation. I'll start with inefficient. Uh, my honorable opponent uh, has stated that uh, in a uh, uh, in a uh, dystopian world, uh, privatization rescues her, uh, helps us to create an efficient and a more uh, what's the word I'm looking for reliable system. Well, that's not the case. Privatization. Uh, I I'll take names as well. I studied in Amity University. I completed my graduation. I applied for my uh, migration certificate two months ago and they said that they are not going to give my migration certificate at least for the next next three weeks so that's three months of waiting and I have paid the fees to get my migration certificate clearly uh, privatization does not lead to efficiency I know what my uh, fellow debitation will say but the amount but uh, the quantity of corruption but the quantity and efficiency in private sector is uh, more reliable to that of public sectors. She has uh, pointed out entrepreneurship. She said that China, US, I'll, I'll not talk about US because China currently has the most entrepreneurship, I agree with her. China, though shows this as private platforms, these uh, topics as private ownership, as privatized, there is nothing in China called privatized, nothing. The only thing privatized is the Chinese Communist Party. They, by hook or by crook, control the privatized industries. So what you're saying is actually a public sector working in a private interface. There are many uh, uh, introductions uh, where she said that in a government or public sectors, there is an influence of politics. Now look, uh, we as a democratic nations as a democratic nations are entitled to abuse. views. So if there wouldn't have been a political view, a political mass suggesting that this is right, this is wrong, if there would have been an elite who would have been continuously using a system for his and his benefit only, then I have to ask, it's better to have a political influence than to have an individual who is responsible to nobody, just to himself. Uh, I want to point out a few detrimental flaws about the concept of privatization. I'll come to Japan. I'll come to um, uh, GTB as well as nationalization. I did my research as well. I'll uh, keep my fundamental flaws of uh, privatization and leave it to the wisdom of the uh, views uh, of the viewers to judge. First, it is the failure to comply with labor laws. Whenever you are introducing private sectors and there isn't a proper labor law, they completely exploit the rights of the people. International Labor Day, we just celebrate it. We hope that everybody gets to work eight hours a day. We don't get it. I myself am doing an internship where I, at this moment, I'm doing an internship now where I have to work from 10 to 7. That's more than seven hours and I'm not getting paid according to the uh, minimum wage per hour. Clearly, if you are working in private sector, there is a cause of efficiency, no doubt, but the people who are working, they are not getting paid. The people who are at the top, they are making money off, and that is not acceptable. The people who are working, they should be able to get the money they deserve. Uh, I'll talk about Amazon because, uh, yes, now I'll talk about the US. Uh, Ashmita rightly pointed out that in US, there are a lot of startups. Uh, I, I don't have to introduce anybody to Amazon. 
take Amazon, for example, and its business model. Before uh, the pre-pandemic strike uh, uh, stroke uh, the earth, first thing Amazon did was they used to pay their uh, employees uh, $7 per hour. After a certain, uh, after the pandemic struck, they paid them $8 per hour. Now everybody is happy due to the pandemic, we are getting one uh, $1 extra in each hour we are working. What Amazon has done is there were scopes of bonuses. They did not, they stopped giving the bonuses and ke uh, kept them working in the monthly, uh, in the hour, a uh, work per hour schedule. So now think about it. If you are given a opportunity that at the end of the month, you'll get $500 dollars us dollars as bonus now that is gone instead of that you're working at least eight hours a day you're getting you're making eight hundred dollars extra let's say you're working for 22 days on a good uh, on a good month you're making 176 dollars where you could have been making 500 dollars that's more than 300 dollars difference and showing this Amazon say, uh, says that they have more efficient system. They are reducing cost when in turn they are using uh, their business model to suppress and exploit workers. I'll come to part of the elites, which has been completely uh, missed by my opponent. She talks about an utopian society. I, I'll come to uh, uh, a part of the elites. We are in general, the main fear of privatization is to give power to few. Who are not accountable at all and this is the problem as i said before the uh, uh, i'll talk about the great reset but i'll come to another point which is exploitation of natural resources uh, in kerala in 1980 she talked about uh, nationalization and privatization think about it uh, in uh, indian market soft drinks were nationalized before they were before you, you rightly pointed out you yourself have said manmohan singh introduced uh, private sectors as a cre planner one of the influential players were coca-cola they set up a plant in uh, Kerala what they did was they started mining uh, they created wells they dug up water they completely destroyed the uh, ecosystem and today even today people are having defects handicaps and there is no water for people to have to drink privatization uh, people responsible for privatization they completely look at their views and their views only uh, another important point you talked about corruption you talked about banks and businesses you said why nationalization is bad why corporate uh, privatization i'll come to uh, corporatization a bit later why uh, privatization is needed well think about it uh, why is privatization needed at the moment the all if privatization would have been so beneficial, they would have taken any bank and they would have made it work. Why we have to nationalize? Because they do not want the banks just to increase their influence. They want to make money out of it. They are basing their system on value. And this is the problem. Talk about PMB. The reason PMB is failing is because PMB is a private sector bank. It's failing completely. It's due, uh, it's due to the complete amass of Nirav Modi uh, and all those things are not going to in those political matters. Another thing is job security. I personally believe, uh, as she said, that if you are not pressurizing a people to work, they will not work. I don't believe in that. I believe in a, a sustainable, systematic system where people are encouraged, not pressurized. So uh, one of the reasons why, yes, there is efficiency, but the people are suffering more in public sector. At the end of the day, uh, if you give a choice between a public sector and a private sector, uh, 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 people, uh, people working in a uh, private sector will always try to come to a government uh, office. Not because they want to work less, not because uh, they are inefficient, because they have job security and that helps them to benefit, that uh, helps them to lead a more social life. Private sector, the main flaw of uh, private sector is they only see what is going on in their workplace. What goes out in the society, that is not the problem. If a person who is completely amassed by the continuous work culture, if he goes out and commits any kinds of crime, it's the, the pro uh, problem of the uh, society. When in turn, it should the public uh, sector making a person work hard should be responsible. I give you an example of Japan. 
you said japan people are uh, extremely efficient i can show you 150 uh, two uh, page document which says that privatization in japan is detrimental people have no families they have no uh, children and most importantly they have no life they are working from 8 in the morning to 9 in the night they go sleep in a hotel next they come up and there is completely forsaken the system one more i know chandradeep we are going on too late i'll just have yeah, two yeah. points Oh, I understand. Yeah, yeah. I have uh, two more points. One is she talked about in nationalization. She talked about when private sectors come into play, they increase the GDP. Very true. No doubt about it. But look at the situation now. After privatization, the main nature of privatization is to eliminate their opponents. When eliminate the, uh, after eliminating their opponents, they get complete monopoly. Then what do they do? They do whatever they like. And most importantly, the ambulance development. Private sector goes into a field where they can make profit. It's just a money game for them. And if money is the game for them, then that's not a way to development. Uh, development is both socio and political as well as educational. Think about BSNL. I'll just take two minutes. I know you are extremely flabbergasted. I apologize. Uh, I'll take two minutes. Uh, I'll talk about BSNL why you talk in detail that bsnl or a public sector banks are uh, uh, failing uh, bsnl uh, has fallen we all know what is the reason behind it they did not go behind money they went behind people who needed the connection when there was no connection provided by vodafone or at that uh, time there was airtel or uh, tata docomo all those if they did not provide you it uh, BSNL worked as a helping hand. They did not base their business on money. They based it on value and cooperation, which is completely missing. One more thing before I conclude, that is a great reset. After the pandemic, the three, uh, the main things we uh, need to understand is to reimagine, re rethink, reinvent, redesign, revive, recreate, reform, and rebalance. To lead a civilization to a prosper, uh, prosperous and sustainable future, one needs pragmatic and paradigm shifts. Though privatization may instigate the above points, uh, it, uh, it would not hesitate to uh, hinder or even destroy a particular person if it's not for their mutual benefit. And thus, privatization cannot be. And I know she uh, did the debate well. That's why she, uh, she speaking for has tried to omit the word only. But since the word does exist in the debate, I will point out that thus privatization cannot be the only way towards development. So yeah, that was uh, two sessions of 15 minutes each now and two excellent speakers speaking on their arguments, giving their arguments out. Yes. And I'm sure the, I'm sure the viewers uh, have enriched their knowledge uh, very much from their arguments. Now, it's just uh, what I uh, Yeah. Now we have got 10 more minutes in this debate to start off the rebuttal session. I will also ask the viewers to actually send their questions and their arguments in the comment section so that I can put them forward for Ashmita and Shoham both. Ashmita and Shoham, you can now just uh, go for each other. <laughs> yeah, Ashmita, start, please. What do you mean? Okay, go for so each other. Since he spoke second and he got a chance to counter attack my arguments, it would be very un unfair if I don't. So the very first thing he said that I contradicted my point. So I would just clarify that. I am talking in context to the present. My point is, there are already enough nationalized sectors. For the future, privatization is more important. Again, uh, a what whole sectors world are you of privatized about? sector, let me complete. A whole world of but privatization is completely about? absurd. A whole world of privatization is completely absurd, just like a whole world of nationalization is. So that is my first point. Secondly, he spoke it about only yeah exactly for the near future privatization is the only way because so you're there are contradicting the thing you're talking for you're contradicting the very uh, motion you're standing for yes uh, it says only and you're saying okay this is my topic but you know what i you're mean isn't the very point only. of That's why you're manipulating the topic 
isn't the very yes. point of debate manipulating the topic my very point is privatization is the only way but let the government exist the way it is as simple as that the okay, second yeah, thing yeah. is he said that people go for government jobs because there is security the very truth <laughs> as we all know is that people run for government jobs because the government pays more money and the very fact of security itself is what causes inefficiency why do you think people in the banks and in other government sectors don't want to do your work at the very first time it is because whether they do it or not they will still get paid think about the current scenario my mother is a government school teacher she is not going to school she is still getting paid look at the teachers in the private sectors they are working day in and day out to make sure that they reach to their students because if they do not do that they won't get paid so these are the two things that i wanted okay you just said that uh, government uh, people in government uh, schools they do not work as well uh, i want to rebuttal that look government has to take care of many things one of the important thing is education uh, you have to understand uh, how many students are studying in government school what is their background and how many students are studying in uh, public school and what are their background you can't say uh, uh, people as uh, teachers are uh, sitting in their home and they are doing nothing who will they teach in the, this pandemic world is a uh, student uh, government is giving one uh, 10000 rupees each to student so that they can afford a smartphone and then they can study private sector do you think any private sector school will give their uh, students 10 100 rupees just to buy a smartphone and so that they can work I think Ashmita, you are facing some technical issues because you are not audible. You are inaudible completely. Yeah, Ashmita's frame has frozen completely. Yeah. Also, I'll ask our viewers to just wait. Yeah, Ashmita is back. Yeah. Ashmita. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, not once did I say that the teachers in working in the government sectors are doing nothing. But yes, they are doing minimal work, but they are still getting paid. That is what my point is. And the very concept of poverty is because the distribution of resources is uneven, and privatization is not responsible for that. It is the government who is. And that's exactly uh, my point. So, yeah. If privatization would have been there, it would have been more distribution of resources. You want to talk facts? Talk my about. My question geo? to you is. My yes, question yes, to you is: Why did you choose Amity? Huh? Why did you choose Amity? It is private. Uh, Yes, it's private. It's because I did not get uh, any other colleges. I'm a very flunky student. I don't study at all. That's it. Exactly. So you see that all these government educational institutes set up such a high bar that But unless I... you cross that, whether or not you have talent or not, you are not getting into it if you do not have. a particular school i studied in an icc medium uh, convent school i did not get uh, any better with time i studied in a private college i did not get the uh, i am the same as well i was 5 years ago i am same education private or not it does not bother i am the same okay uh, also in your speech the exact words were when people mm -hmm. work under private sectors they are not getting the money and the business owner is how do you justify this when it's very simple look at the fact if you are working uh, uh, well i'll give you i'll say the uh, previous statement when you are working you should have ownership and right in the company private uh, private uh, privatization does not let you the people there is a difference between earning money and getting paid and there is a difference between making money out of it at the end of the day Jeff Bezos is making money out of it, right? The people in Amazon they are earning money, while the customer distributing it is getting paid. There is different issues. Do you agree with me or not? Do you understand the difference? Now think about it. Who is the most profit? Uh, who is earning the most profit? 
it is the owner. If you answer this, then you have answered your question. Right. Uh, in the government, like when hey, we are I in a country. No, no, I'm just saying uh, the government, the politicians get paid the most, just like how Jeff Bezos gets paid the most. Uh, if I have to go by uh, statistics, government, uh, the uh, the politicians you want to talk about, there's a difference between a minister and a political leader. I'm talking about ministers. Okay, make that fair. Uh, as far as I know, people uh, who are getting uh, in, who are an MP in the Rajya Sabha, they get paid 30, 35,000 per month. Uh, uh, prime minister in the uh, Rajya Sabha is getting 35,000 uh, per month. How much is, uh, let's say, CEO of uh, Microsoft at the moment earning? You yourself said that privatization, people are getting less. The reason people go for government job is that they are getting paid more money. I ask you, who is getting uh, more money now? The people who are working in the government. Uh, I never knew that Microsoft was a public enterprise, but sure. If you no, you, uh, you said who is getting more money, the people who work in the government are. And do you think that's fair compared to the corruption that I exists? Know, okay, you, uh, okay, let's not talk about politi uh, politicians and uh, let's talk about bureaucrats. Uh, 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 who what do you call that a secretary of a department in the union government i know for a fact because i was a upsc aspirant once once gets paid 2.5 lakhs per month think about it uh, a secretary in the union cabinet how much does uh, jeff bezos or elon musk or bill gates gets paid look at the strata and then decide now you can't be contradicting facts and just uh, she's gone again. So leave that. No, she's there. No, I can't see her. Oh, okay. okay, I so, have a I, so, I have a question from the audience. I have a question from the audience for Shoham. I'll just show it on the screen. Yeah, it says government college and government school teachers are not giving the same potential as the private school and college teachers are giving to teach students. Yet the govern, government teachers are getting enough money. Is it fair according to Soham? No, it's not fair. Absolutely. We need to find efficient ways to make the uh, government, you're talking about education, the education sector more efficient. Definitely, no doubt about it. But you have to understand to leave it to a public sector where there is nobody to answer to. They may uh, spread their own propaganda. If a uh, person, uh, if a, a student is studying in a government institution, he is bound no matter what to always receive education as per uh, the, uh, what to say, the ideas that our founding fathers have made. If you're studying in an education institution, you, a private education institution, you know Macbeth, you know Othello, you know Romeo and Juliet, but you don't know what is Panchatantra. You don't know your basic life. You don't know your basic what's around you in the society. You know the big bigger picture of life, but what's going around you, you don't know. First, and uh, if I can, uh, uh, this is a question, right? From Suchishnita yeah. Ghosh. Yes, yes. Okay. The, yet the, go this is the most interesting part. Yet the government teachers are getting paid more. Okay. Uh, then you have to understand this is the point where it gets interesting i just said that public sector people make more money people at the high end of the wage are making more money people who are actually working are not getting money think about it a person who is not teaching is just investing is earning more money than the people who is actually studying the students i ask you is this fair for a private institution as a private institution where the people working are earning less than the people who is investing Okay, I have one more question. I think this is also for Soham. Besides, I have seen government teachers teaching students in private, earning money rather than in college itself. Is that right? Uh, well, uh, you have to understand th that this is not a domain of public sector. This is uh, has to be what we call as decency and chivalry, isn't it? This is not a uh, yes. I understand. I completely accept uh, accept it. But people who uh, you have to understand. People who are getting paid and who want to earn more, more money, it's fair with them. But
but the question is are they doing corruption if yes then the person responsible should be removed uh, for, why i studied in many educational uh, classes where teachers who taught me in uh, tuition they were employees of private school so this is not relevant to government teachers and government students only this is the problem of the education system in general okay i hope that that suffices uh, for her questions that she has put up and uh, hence i'll bring this debate to a close it was a very one it was an amazing debate both of you actually went for each other as i said go for each other you went for each other and actually went down. and uh, the topic you know what i tell you what is the problem you are enjoying this too much uh, you are enjoying hmm. this too much you are enjoying yeah, this yeah. too so I, people I, I having a pop fight you are enjoying this too much next time yeah, maybe i will see for free you have to see i'm sure the viewers are also enjoying because this is a topic that uh, uh, that is very relevant in True. today's time because there is a debate going on between privatization and uh, public enterprises and then we have this uh, phobia of everything go going on to become private rather than becoming public and what will happen and what is not going to happen and i think uh, to uh, present it like this that you have done in front of public and to present it in front of a viewers the clear way of what the what are the pros and cons of uh, privatization and of of, of uh, public enterprises is something that is a uh, highly enrichable for everyone and we got to uh, know a lot and uh, thank you for coming we uh, will also see you in the next debate that is on 15th of august on independence day i hope all the viewers will join then okay before i go i will be uh, getting the marks from the judges and i'll be declaring the winner of today's debate and i'll request the viewers to stay because we have another debate lined up and that is also a very contemporary uh, debate a topic on a very contemporary topic uh, that is uh, should is democracy the best form of government and we have come from times of hitler and we are now uh, coming to times of narendra modi and uh, those who are two completely different domains and two different countries and yet uh, we can find some similarities some dissimilarities uh, some might argue against some might uh, argue for and we'll have that uh, thing in mind now we'll uh, have a debate on that avirup okay, will be yeah. going on the topic and shubhodeep will be going against the topic and in the meantime i will just wait uh, one minute for the marks we'll start the debate in 3 minutes from 8:50 okay i just and want to take this time to say ashmita there should be no hard feelings you are an excellent uh, debatician you came very well prepared you stick to your guns excellently done i uh, really i never expected such a stiff opposition excellently done so for you yes same to you same to you you have done your research very well as well but just to say your speech was about think about this is this fair is that fair whereas my speech well, was you... based on statistics and proof that's it well i guess statistics <laughs> as well i guess statistics as well i said uh, look at the great change uh, look at 25% of the people yeah we'll still go on we should shut it Let's chip it. Uh, Leave yeah. it to the wisdom yeah. of our judges, to our viewers. That, that's good to see, but I have just received the marks from our honourable judges, and I might say it is again a very, very, very close for debate. Uh, and the marks will, I think, not do justice to how the debate went because at the end of it, it should have been tied. But we have to choose a winner, and the judges have actually uh, digged in deep to uh, uh, give us a winner. And with seventy-two point five points. Soham loses out to Ashmita with seventy four point five points. So Ashmita wins second uh, time in a row, and uh, I think she's all set for the finals on twenty second because this was a battle between the winners, and she again emerged from the winners. And uh, there's one more round though before, before we go to the final. But uh, it can be said that she uh, actually demands a place in the top two, and hence she will uh, go to the finals uh, sooner than later. Uh, so. Yeah, congratulations to Ashmita and uh, wonderful Thank you debate. So much to you, to Sohamda, to the judges. Uh, to wonderful be very debate. honest, even uh, I don't agree that privatization is the only way. Which Sohamda clearly pointed out that I completely ignored the only word. And Sohamda, you are amazing. Your yeah, counter attack was excellent. On. So yeah. yeah, thank you so much to the judges and thank you to the audience as well. 
we'll engage okay. again in the debate uh, in the next debate we'll have ushmita up against subodit but before that uh, we'll have today's second debate and uh, thank you first of all to soham and ashmita for coming and i'll just invite avirup and uh, subodit to join us in the stream and as you can see the topic on the screen democracy is the best form of government debating it will be subodit and avirup will be joining me in the stream shortly yeah uh, they are here uh, please turn on your cameras avirup and subodip and we are going to start this debate uh, i know uh, it was uh, it went a little long than i would have expected it but yes the debate was so healthy that it couldn't uh, it was just impossible to stop uh, people top uh, talking uh, in this topic and to introduce subodip and avirup uh, subodip is a student of mechanical engineering from jis college of engineering and avirup majumdar is a student Uh, of MA English from Sidhivyas College Park Street and I declare the debate open Avirup and Shubhadeep can you please turn on your cameras please turn on your cameras uh Avirup will go first and he will go for the topic so Avirup uh, can you please start with the topic and yeah again to the viewers who have joined late with this uh, debate is divided into two halves 15 minute halves One fifteen minute will go into the arguments that both of them present, and other fifteen minutes for rebuttal and questions. So, uh, Abhiru, if you can, if you can hear me, please start. Yes, Abhiru is here. Abhiru, please start with for the motion. Your arguments for the motion. Yeah. Can you all yeah. hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. You are live in okay. FBI. I, I can't see you. Just a minute. I think we have some technical glitches. And to remind the audience, we have had a wonderful debate just a few minutes ago, and uh, Ashmita won seventy-four point five to seventy-two point five uh, against Soham. So we had a wonderful debate, and we are all set for the second debate of the day. And Avirup is going to speak for the topic. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah audible. Please continue. Please start. Yeah, so, good evening to the viewers and everyone. Good evening to Shubhadeep and Chandradeep. And today, the topic says uh, about democracy, right? And democracy, by definition, goes like this: as a form of government in which the people have the authority to choose their uh their ruling leaders their own government right and it's a structure in which we elect our in the, we elect our representatives to a house or a senate and who then help us to run the country in a patterned manner which is going to have a you know, regular functioning smooth flow of the life but when we come down the line when we trace back in history we have few really names we have got some names like you know mao uh, hitler stalin mussolini and you have other names as well right you have hammurabi from the egyptian civilization who said an eye for an eye okay if you have you have stolen someone's purse the other one is asked to go and steal the other person's you know stops and if you kill someone the punishment is you to get killed so you know these are what dictatorships has you know have done to us then we have got communism we have got socialism and n number of isms to speak about and isms have filled up the uh, human mind and filled up the human civilization but why democracy is important in today's world is because it is a way through which we ensure that we do not go astray in life whether it's america whether it's us as indians one of the most important what we call democratic countries and we i do not know whether we have a democracy still going on or not but still then we have france germany italy we all have all great nations the big five the major five powers right in the un uh, who are uh, functioning democracies and they ensure that 
the people whom we are choosing as our leaders, the people whom we have sent up there on the screen, whom we have asked to be there on the podium, should you know, voice the voiceless rather than to be the voice of themselves, rather. Okay, it means if a person whom I am asking to go and speak on my behalf and that person goes up there and starts, you know, uh, speaking for his own good, I feel that is not a democracy. A democracy calls for justice, which is a big term indeed, but often misunderstood and misquoted. We have other uh, nuances. We, we have other facets towards democracy. It's just it's a big term, right? But then in a world, in a world where nuclear power has a major role to play, where uh, economy is a it's one of the most foremost matters to be discussed where religion makes, has got a considerable uh, stance to make in this world. Uh, going for democracy is a, noble, is a nobler idea because if we centralize, if we polarize the power into the hands of a single person, or if we polarize or centralize the power in the hands of a single, I would say, what to say, a group of people, whatever you might call them, a party, uh, and what else? At the end of the day, you will find it is for the party's benefit or it is for the individual's benefit that person is working. We have great nations like China, Russia, and other socialists and communist countries who have been performing quite well. But then we need to also understand there the people are in trouble in North Korea, in, in great nations where, you know, they, they, they eulogize themselves and say that we are, we are ruling the world with power. But is that power giving happiness to the people in the country? Is that power enabling the, you know, the poor, the poorest of the poor, the people who are troubled, the, the ones who are plagued by suffering, are they in happiness? Are they, are they getting what they must get? Should they be treated the way they are treated? If we, if we read, there's this wonderful short novella by George Orwell, calls the, it's called The Animal Farm, and Orwell wrote this in protest of the, the revolution in Russia. And we find how you know, the community of pigs have been portrayed in the novel where we find a person who, who tried to do good for the group of people turns out to be the tyrant, the one who ostracizes, the one who needs the power, the one who needs uh, protection, the one who needs the basic needs to be supplied to them. And by doing that, he grows to power. Uh, we live in a country where we face similar problems. I'm not naming someone, but the thing is, we are in a, we, are, we, are in, we, are, we, we stay in a place where we are hegemonized, we are no more free, we are no more, uh, we, we can't express our thoughts. For example, you read Arun Dhuti Roy, uh, the god of small things, you find how communism has crippled the state of Kerala, okay, how it has, you know, uh, empowered certain people, leaving the rest to die in pain, right? Then we have got, uh, the condition of China, it is a major issue now, right? Uh, for this corona and the pandemic, people are speaking of the conspiracy theorists and, and, and great things going on. Pardon me? You need to conclude, Abhi. Yes. Uh, so I feel uh, in a world, in the 21st century, liberal democracy ensures man's individuality. Everyone has his own individuality rather than to be governed by someone else's whims and fancies. I can't let myself to be governed by anyone else whom I don't prefer. But that person comes and, and exerts his power on me. So I feel it's better to live in a harmonious manner, lending our shoulders with others and letting each and everyone to live in happiness rather than be in pain. And with that, I conclude. Thank you so much.
Okay, it was a very enriching uh, speech, uh, arguments that you have provided uh, on uh, the pros of democracy and how democracy is actually helping us and not uh, taking our wishes and our whims and fancies away from us and not uh, putting something on us. So now I invite Shubhodeep to actually present his argument against the motion uh, in response to Abhirub's arguments. Over to you, Shubhodeep. <coughs> <clears throat> well, <clears throat> to be honest, uh, speaking against the motion was not so easy. Finding and researching <laughs> is democracy the best form of government or not was not easy. But still, I've got some points and well, let uh, let the best man win, I will just say. Well, uh, there were some good points as said by Abhirup and that enlightened me a lot and gave me second thoughts on my points. So that was really good. So <clears throat> I will just start with the sentence that democracy is the best form of government as our topic says, but uh, I think it's charismatic, but uh, what about the unqualified leadership? I will start with the basic points, the main points, unqualified leadership. Well, when we are talking about leadership, we are talking about the head of the state, the one who controls how the laws work and how the government uh, takes up actions or measures regarding our individual needs. Well, regarding that, one of the more renowned uh, philosopher, Socrates, argued that people need to be equipped to vote during elections instead of going about the process without the right information. That is, we can't just go out and vote for a random guy who's just providing us or just making us feel good by giving us certain facilities. We can't just do that. We have to think about our future. We have to think about the future things. We have to think uh, extensive, extensively how that man will work in the future. Well, <clears throat> Socrates failed that the people need to be rational about who they vote for, not what they should not have the right to vote. He warned that people may be swayed by the leaders. That is simple. That it, It's just as the point that I told you earlier that the leaders might uh, give a flashy advertisement to you that we will do this, we will do that. That comes in every part of the government. That comes in every type of uh, government systems, either democracy or any other type of. So the leaders, <clears throat> Socrates said that the people uh, said that the people might vote for someone because of how the candidate makes them feel, not because the candidate is able to do the job properly or correctly. As I uh, change my word, it needs we need to think about that democracy gives us the way of voting our leaders, our head of the state, but it also takes our chances or gives us a false hope that with the people that we are choosing are going to work on the sector that we are choosing them for. They are going to do their work properly. I mean, <clears throat> however, democracy fails when it comes to the selection of the right person for the government position by polling. Well, the polling system has its own errors and all, but with with that, we also still live around. So let me give you an example. Uh, we have all seen uh, the show, the game show called Kon Banega Karupati, right? Uh, <clears throat> who will be a millionaire? So in that, we have a certain uh, lifeline called the audience poll. We have given two answers. One is wrong, one is right. Let me tell you, if the audience chooses the wrong answer in majority, the wrong answer will be elected for the participant. Is that even fair? I mean, the majority chooses the wrong answer so that that wrong answer can be further implemented over in the further times. So, but there comes a question where <clears throat> I will just uh, say with my uh, debate partner, uh, debate uh, debatition, uh, if we are not choosing uh, democracy, what form of government will we choose? What is there to choose? What form of government is uh, there? I must say that democracy is not the worst, worst 
government system or the governing system there is monarchy there is other sorts of government systems that are way worse than this system but according to recent times as avirupa already stated that according to recent times even democracy is being questioned our way of life was getting easier due to this democracy but in this recent times in this recent years even this democracy has been questioned many times well in 1990 dictators used to rule most of africa eastern europe and asia by 2005 democracies have emerged across these continents some becoming powerful nations and solid democracies but other half of that people other part uh, some other parts where there is no democracy those parts were mostly com- comprised of uh, uh, i will say that uh, autocracy or like dictatorship just like in recent times north korea is the amount of people the amount of the people are going through the things that people are going through is just sad so how will we choose which governing system is best for the country if not democracy then i have a solution i have researched about this a lot i might uh, i know some of my viewers will also know that it's technocracy technocracy is been hugely imparted in singapore right now because technocracy just as uh, democracy was defined by abiru technocracy is defined as choosing a governing body or a governing or a lead or a head of the state who has that particular knowledge or the particular qualifications to work on the to to be head of the state he has the particular qualifications so <clears throat> even with democracy a prevalent form of government how reliable is it i mean how much reliable is it uh, is it uh, we choose uh, democracy or the democracy is was a way in which we individuals have the rights to channel our voices through that but are our voices being channeled to the right person or even the right person is uh taking measures taking actions for our voices is that even being allowed in democracy now in this present scenario well <coughs> many people in some of the most developed democracies question the fairness and representativeness of their systems so can we expect young emerging democracies to do better can we do that well <coughs> So what if we need to conclude? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but first, we if we I need to conclude, then we need to say that if we clean the political process and debar the bad people from getting contested in elections, well, the shortcomings in a democracy can be overcome, and we can get past the governance by the best people in our country. But this democratic democratic system will not allow us to do that. it's all about flashy advertisements and hundred of people rallying over the roads it's just that so i'll just conclude <coughs> my part thank you yeah so that was a very uh, difficult thing to actually say against the topic but shubodeep has presented really uh, beautiful uh, arguments uh, against the topic and countering avirup's topic also so we'll just uh, start the rebuttal session for 15 minutes i will ask the viewers to post their questions if they have any arguments or counter arguments in our chat box so that i can forward them to the participants here and to start the rebuttal session i will uh, ask obirup to actually start it yeah you can actually now go for the rebuttal session yeah hello uh, you muted yeah shubhudeep yes yeah wonderfully said but the thing is uh, i know it's a very tough topic to deal with for you uh even i would have fumbled if i would have been in your place but then by the laws of debate i have to counter you yeah the thing is you said of false hope mithya asha right 
see when i vote or elect someone vote for someone and elect for someone else is a different thing okay i vote i am voting for someone and the person gets elected okay and the person malfunctions by sitting over his sitting on his chair he has been given a wonderful office he has been given two or three cars you know he has been given power but then that part that person starts to malfunction i know the onus lies on me i voted for that person i know that but then it is only in democracy it is only in democracy that we give ourselves we the people give ourselves another opportunity to choose and elect for a second one in the second term in a democracy we do not have any hard and fast rule that a single man has to rule for unthinkable you know span of time you might speak of presidential democracy in america where the president has a lot of power vested on him but then the even the president has to work in synchron you know, synchronizing his acts and actions by taking the decisions by doing every sort of thing after discussing with the cabinet or the senate right so my question to you is that when you say a false hope we do have the other option of you know undoing the or rewriting a new start a new right rewriting a new tale by pressing the other <coughs> button the next time we vote so i don't feel that democracy can be uh, democracy can be ever win okay can, okay i get you know the de democracy can ever uh, come below or or it can be outdone by um, dictatorship monarchy anarchy constitutional monarchy what we have in uk and whatever it might be go ahead yeah i understand your question that we have a chance of uh, working on that false hope or we have a, we have got a chance of electing another one or voting for a decent guy who will work on that hope that was given false previously but the thing is after voting for that guy who gave us that false hope we have to wait long 5 years just to be just to vote another time so that we can get uh, that man who can work on that hope we need to wait for 5 long years just to be just to know that uh, we have a chance that we can elect or vote for a d guy that that d guy for the job you have to wait for it 5 years so isn't that a long time to just uh, if certainly we need some facilities in our town just think about we need a uh, suppose we need electricity just for example we need electricity our politicians promised us uh, i don't want to say anything but anything else on this topic but i have any politician is said give a, give us a hope that we will present you with electricity in just after the vote gets completed but he didn't went on to his promise he didn't uh, gave what he said us and we are stuck we have to stay there for more 5 years or until the next election or the voting round comes up how long will i will we survive through that yeah then do you expect <coughs> do you expect or rather the people who are against the motion do they expect that a dictator like hitler will come and mend the electricity or mend the that is know, hold on hold on let me speak you know uh, mend the electricity or uh, do the plumbing work they can't see one that is the thing that is the thing i told you just a minute hold on hold on the thing is there's another point of you know waiting for 5 years what you brought up five long years india is a country with diversity we say that it's an esoteric land and why do we say that because it is the same country we have had multiple times of elections within the five years theek ache mane first we had the election we chose some representative and the government failed 
The government failed to do what it has it had promised to give its people. It had failed to come up to its expectations. The country was dissatisfied and the country went for another, another election. I believe, uh, you know, if we, in the, in the days to come, if we have the Mahagat Bandhan going on in Delhi, then I do not know. We might have another scenario like this where the country might once again, you know, get broken into pieces and people might re-elect and re-vote for people whom they have, they would have, you know, they, they thought that they would have worked better for us. So anyhow, I can't say that democracy is lesser than anything because it is only in democracy. It, I have to stand still to my point because this, first of all, this is a very, uh, we, we can't debate on this for a long time because at the end of that, it is it is the people's voice. The preamble. Definitely, is, definitely, that's the thing. As yeah, well, uh, you say. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That that's the thing you told. That do we need? Do we really need as an alternative of democracy? Do we need dictatorship? No, we don't need dictatorship. We don't need autocracy. We need we need a government governing system that listens to the people's voices and has the qualification or has the right set of mindset right mindset to work on it so you're to work on it. so you're contradicting your own motion you are saying no that no i'm we not supporting democracy where, i'm no, not no, supporting we need, democracy. we need we need a government where you know where we need a government where the elected members the members who are there must listen to the people's voice which is a democracy which is a democracy we can't we can't go against that <coughs> If democracy is only way of channeling our voices, then how is Singapore such a big place working with technocracy? I have just told you the point that it's technocracy, technocracy it's a, it's is, a, it can be a technocracy. See, see, see. It can be yeah, technocracy. But at the end of the day, it's a democracy, it's a republic. I have been to Singapore personally, and I have seen there people depend on their on their representatives more than on gods. Because they give what they promise. People, countries like India fail from that. We suffer from that. That, is, that. that is the thing. No, that is the thing. But because so every are, time in a democratic system, in a democratic system, when we uh, go for a vote, every time we had this thought, ye kaam karega. Ye kaam karega hamare liye. But every time we feel that thoughts, Every time someone arrives and fails that thought, this thought this can't lead. It. This thought can't lead us to change the constitutional patterns. That change we can't change India into a socialist. You are a, talking about. You are talking about. You are talking about preamble, right? So there are some constitutional rights. It gives us freedom of speech. I uh, want to ask you: Isn't freedom of speech something that we are born with? Or is that given by it our comes state? Under, it, it, comes under, it comes under the human rights given to authorize or rather give, ensure to us by the UN. But then you can contradict me by saying that do we really have uh, the freedom of speech? That's the individual party's problem. It's not the problem with democracy. Democracy ensures that you speak. Go to England. They had, you'll see, Theresa May was brought down. Boris Johnson went up. They had the Brexit. We can't, they, they, but they have constitutional monarchy. But in constitutional monarchy also, they have a democratic set of patterns governing them. Democracy ensures a way of living where we all have the equal voices to speak. We, we, we as individuals have our own understanding towards life. And by echoing those voices, by being the, you know, the representatives whom we send over there, they have to voice the voiceless. It is other than other than that, we can't emerge as better societies. We can't polarize. We can't centralize power on a single individual. You might ask me, that is democracy doing that? That's a di different debate. But de democracy ensures that you do that. And the next yeah, time that you was, vote... That, that and, can and be my question. Time, well, and, and next time you vote, vote... I rather press the right button, okay, by seeing the things. That's going the thing in a democracy, right? I I meant to ask you how much democracy is reliable. I've already said in my points how much democracy is reliable. 
that is my question to you democracy is all time reliable we can't say that socialism or communism or a dictatorship is reliable we you have just said me you have just you just told me in your previous points that uh, some constitutional monarchy systems are taking up parts of democracy right mm. then why are not why are they not imparting democracy fully what is stopping Wait. them from doing that see england is a country which was uh, governed by the monarchs right uh, since the time immemorial england had kings and queens theek hai but then there came a time when oliver cromwell a uh, leading man during the restoration period he thought of changing the entire process he thought of making england a place called you know the republic or the democracy of england theek hai but then what happened when they started implementing oliver cromwell oliver cromwell when he started implementing democratic rules regulations puritanical thoughts what happened the people were conditioned with monarchy they knew what monarch do what a monarch does what a monarch stands for but with a new set of government rules they had to back, back off they couldn't perform and so they had to once again bring back monarchy by you know conjoining by conjoining both the ways of government england is the only country in the world which has constitutional monarchy no other so called you know a, a major power in the world has a constitutional monarchy England, yeah, that is the thing you just justified my point that democracy we we democracy have, as a individual system cannot totally work as work in a country democracy needs to be joined with something other than just democracy because you just you just justified and if i may ask you i justified it for england not for any other country and if i may ask you what is that question mark part that can be added to democracy to run to to have a better functioning of a country <clears throat> well uh, that thing is that uh, you have just said that <clears throat> how can the question mark work on a betterment of a country if we are no, no, giving no, my question is you said i you yeah. said tell me that with democracy something else has to be added to make a better government or the better functioning of a country right so what is that extra thing with democracy that we should add what the what ex- yes the extra thing might be any other form of government that is more advantageous to the people we need to add something that is more advantageous to the people so you that just not me. just democracy that that needs to be a more political sense of view well i like that i lack like that okay but still i would say that i know it's very tough for you you are you you have to you are in a very difficult position but then <laughs> democracy okay. uh, is, can i just follow it's all the conspiracy of chandradev i mean uh, the moderator is just giving us i if i can uh, forward questions to uh, shubodeep first so yeah. here is a question for shubodeep true democracy and big tech do they need each other now more than ever to succeed locally and globally <coughs> well to uh, true democracy and big tech well if we are talking about technology and government well uh, definitely technology plays an important role globally or as locally because technology is that uh, is that link between the government it plays an important link between the government and us so that we can get what uh, we can uh, hear those voices the politicians that tell uh, tell us the answers they give us that can be channeled directly to us technology is a thing that helps us in everything in our life in making up a government and breaking up a government okay and i have a question to abhirup also it's also from ondra jokraborty does literacy is compulsory for democracy most common people are voting without any knowledge that's why they vote actually uh, absolutely so what do you think about it absolutely literacy ensures that a person understands before he acts i would ask to read you swami vivekananda a person you know uh, i'll just share a small example from swami ji's life and so once swami ji was asked about widow remarriage a uh, person in us asked 
in USA while well, Swamiji was there in USA, a person asked, uh, Swamiji, what do you feel about widow remarriages? And Swamiji answered, do you feel, no, what do you think? I, I am a widow or am, am I a widow? And the person said, no, why do you ask me this? Swamiji said, first, you know, give education to the woman. First, then become literate. And then ask the person that, do you want a married life after your husband has died? Or don't you want that? Let the person or the individual to decide. So literacy is the foremost thing that we need in democracy. And that's the problem with India, that we do not have literacy in India. We do not have literacy with the people who are governing us. We do not have, no, we have a, a universal adult franchisee, but we, half of the people in this country, I'm pretty sure, they do not understand what is universal adult franchisee. That every person who is, you know, so-called an adult, um, you know, who is, who is, uh, who, without any biases of gender, caste, religion, sex, whatever it might be, has the liberty, you know, the liberty to vote. So literacy is important, and literacy is the key towards a better society, towards a greater society, and towards a more efficient and successful society. As Dr. Shashi Tharoor would have put it, you know, he, he often quotes, uh, Shashi is a great parliamentarian, that we don't make a new India. We want a better India. We want a greater India and not a new India. India is there, but we need a better. We don't want new. We need <coughs> a, a, a place where we can function in a more systematic manner. Thank yeah, you. That's so the much. thing. I think Abhirup will agree with me that literacy uh, <laughs> is important for any form of government. Literacy is, is an important notion for any form of government. Will that be democracy, autocracy, or anything? Right. Okay, so I have an argument here from Rishik. Uh, he says a true democracy is impossible to achieve because of the human nature. Everyone has their own set of mind processes. So implementing total democracy will ensure people with common robotic intellect and with no evils and only severing or only serving. So the pure case of democracy is practically impossible. Any thoughts? I, on will, it? Ask, I will ask Rishik to have a greater study on uh, the world, uh, on, on countries like, you know, I will ask him to study uh, countries like France, Germany, England, India as well, US, Canada, where they have achieved true democracy. There can be ups and downs, but uh, I know you, you are true. You, you are true. I understand. I, I understand your uh, point of view, but it is possible. But it is not possible in India because we have a great amount of population to deal with. And they don't understand what is the meaning of democracy. The word democracy is made of English letters. And the word English is not known to the people. They do not know ABCD. So how they will know what democracy is? Yeah, if I may add that as per the constitutions that was drafted, it was... Uh, give, there was a ratio between the number of MLAs and the number of uh, people that they should govern. And if we go, if we, if we have, if we would have went with that ratio, I'm pretty sure we'd have more than uh, 800 MPs, but uh, sorry, MLAs by now today instead of just 545. Uh, so it's a very sharp uh, difference, or very not sharp. You can say a very large difference between what uh, we call democracy and what actually democracy is and how uh, it is to be governed. And with that, I'll uh, bring another of six uh, comments here. And in the sense of giving freedom to people, we know a fact and a role model that is America that provides, but such freedom has its consequences because that freedom give Americans guns to every individuals there. And we know that what massacres do happen. So my question is that whether the freedom should be restricted or have no boundaries. Freedom must, freedom must uh, for me freedom is a very fluid term okay yeah just like gender it is a fluid term. okay just like gender freedom also lies on a spectrum which is quite broad and for understanding the aspects of freedom we need to understand the basic nature of human lives what does we what do we understand by the word freedom and by, uh, by giving us the example of America and uh, incidents that go around in states, we need to say that it's a more, it's a country where recklessness, psychological breakdown has creeped into the 
nerves the sinews of the people the government ensures if you go for barack obama's government donald trump's government i know trump is i know you people may trump, uh, comment on trump in a in a very wretched way but the still while he was in governance now with joe biden we have the best of the governance going on freedom been given in a you know with lgbtq issues with issues of religion with issues of all sorts of matter they ensure that people must get the best amount of freedom but that freedom must not you know poison or try to destroy human lives but we all have our own limitations rishik and we can't expect that uh, everything is going to be perfectly fine yes. you know <laughs> everything can be ship shaped everything cannot be ship shaped and everything has its everything has its own pros and cons so yes democracy has its cons yes, definitely it, the thing is ha huh, bol yeah that the thing is that if we are given if we are given the freedom that doesn't uh, tell us to buy a gun and run with the, uh, run with it in the streets the freedom has its own moral values and and all we have to respect that we have to think about that if you are giving the freedom of speech or freedom of anything there is a way of living we are given the freedom not to just buy guns or get armories and run around the street and creating violence because that that but, that is not a definition we, of freedom we, we do not have the freedom of doing that because it was taken by taken uh, from us uh, by the britishers before 19, uh, if i am not wrong 1905 uh, when the partition of bengal took place and the yeah. thing is uh, if you go to haryana if you go to punjab if you go to um, if you if you go to in uttar pradesh if you go to bihar if you even go to kerala uh, if you even if you go to in west bengal also the mahab uh, there's a lot of group yeah of there are different group of okay. people the communists and all group of people right groups of people <coughs> that is the thing now it's not just about freedom it's the lack don't of we have an easy access don't we have yes we do have yes we, we definitely have. have the easy yeah, access that is our, why they are running around it is on our okay I have, I have i have one more comment from ashmita uh, she says if people have the power to elect people also have the power to remove democracy is the best because there is nothing else also uh, some other form of government does not exist so in the present scenario democracy is the best what can be done uh, is have strict eligibility criteria in terms of education and not literacy just because the people are corrupt does not de- disapprove the whole system of democracy yeah she is again uh, right on her own terms uh, i'll just uh, let avirup and shubodeep discuss on it and i'll just await the marks from the judges in the meantime yeah yeah nicely presented that <clears throat> if uh, people have the power to ele- uh, elect Uh, people also have the power to remove well let me tell you we elected someone uh, well uh, no nothing personal okay if we elected someone who was not the person to be elected but he stuck with us how will I, how will we removing him until and unless his tenure gets over have you done that some, yes we have done that there's something called impeachment in the government yeah. where we can okay. impeach anyone we like whether it is the chief justice of india or whether it is the president or the prime minister joe biden uh, sorry donald trump was asked to come down of his office it's a regular procedure which goes on in democracy when the the leader cannot respond to the needs of the people and it is only possible in democracy and no other form of government yeah okay you, with that, uh, with that uh, yeah, yeah. let us now bring the uh, debate uh, into a close because i have just received the marks from the judges and again it was a very close for debate again very very close for debate uh, shubodeep did a excellent job after having such a disadvantage of having to speak against the topic and avirup uh, as usual he has done a very good job and the results actually say so avirup actually wins the debate with 78 points compared to shubodeep's 75 So congratulations to Avirup. He's still in the race for the final. And Shubhodeep, we have to we have just one more go, and you have to uh, depend on all those calculations to make your way up to the final. If not, you have always a place for the you have always a debate for the third place. So we have one more debate to the viewers. I might uh, add that we have one more round of debates that will take place on 15th of August. That is Independence Day. Before we go to 22nd of August, that is Raksha Bandhan. On that day, we'll have our finals. and our third place playoffs uh, so please stay with us uh, again we'll uh, hope to see you on 15th of august 
and uh, yes Abhi, i know you have you have something to speak but please let me uh, finish it and before that i want to uh, tell everybody that uh, the first debate winner was ashmita who actually uh, defeated uh, shoham uh, by two points and here we look defeat subodeep by three points and we have come to the end of this debate we will go get to know who debates whom according uh, to my knowledge that i can recall now it will be uh, ashmita versus shubodeep and shoham versus abhirup for the last round uh, the topics uh, for the debate will all be given to you uh, on the 14th of august uh, through our fb instagram page so stay tuned with us thank you